So, the rhino. Oh, God. Where do I begin with this tank? It's one of those tanks that has multiple uh, problems I have with it, but that's my thing. But before we begin to them, before we talk about this whole thing and open this tank up real wide to talk about it, I want to make it a little announcement. Now, I did say this on Facebook, and I'm now saying it right now in YouTube. Do you still want me to do the review of the Ruthless? And the reason why I said that on Facebook is usually I get a fast response in that. And some people said they don't want me to review it because mostly everybody has this tank now. Everybody knows what it is and how it's played. So, I'm asking you, audience, do you still want me to try to review The Ruthless? Leave down in the comments below if you want me to review it. Or, so that way I know if it's not a waste of time reviewing this tank. Because I know this has a lot of problems with it. I know it has a lot of things that you can fix and solve it. But it's one of those tanks that people are saying like, oh, I already have it, so... There's no point of doing a review because it's one of the season pass ultimate tanks. And that's fair. That's fair. If you want to judge by your tank thing, that's fine. I'm just asking you guys if you want me to spend time reviewing it. All right. Enough judge that. Let's get to the Rhino. So basically the Rhino is a hybrid tank. It is one of the one of its tanks. Now to talk about this real quick, in case you're wondering, what is this tank? Well, it's a mixture of three countries, British, uh, Russia, in Deutschland, Germany. And you're probably wondering, well, what's the part of it? Well, the main hull of the tank is a Tiger tank. Tiger II, to be exact. The Kunitztiga. And the pretty much the turret is the British one. I can't remember its name of it. Um, I think it's that uh, Equalizer or something. But it, it it's basically... Not Equalizer, that's the RD. But it's basically the British head turret from the Premium Tier 8. And if any Soviet Union knows that, that is the Defender's main cannon gun that's welded to that. So you got a Defender's gun, the British Tier 8 Heavy with the little skirt armor fucking turret, and the Kunin's Tiga, basically, with some skirt armor. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that's good, Fury, that's amazing. Well, how can you go wrong? <sighs> There, there's a lot wrong with it. You could already tell by me sighing. But before we do that, let's do what the first thing I always do in World of Tanks is talk about the armaments. Now, the only thing that's good about this tank is its armaments. It's fucking beautiful. I mean, it's got the Conan's Tigger's frontal armor. Now, the underplayer is crap, obviously, because it's the same thing as the Conan's Tigger Tiger 2. And it, it's funny because... It's got spatial armaments on it, too. So you see, like, those platings there, the tracks and stuff? Those are not decorations. I'll show you real quick. See where the number 8 is? And pretty much the um, plating there, some tracks there. Yeah, those are spatial armaments. So, mind you, it it can block low, little low-tier derp guns. Not big, huge derp guns, because here's a clip of me dying to something with spatial armaments that depend through the spatial armaments with high explosives. Yeah, I figured that one out. Um, so... Yeah, I find it funny because, like, it's got some good track armor things, so it has an additional armaments. That's great. Beautiful. Wunderbar. But the problem I have with it is the basically everything else besides this. And for the turret, it's even more better. Now, people don't know this, but if you keep the tank flat like this on the ground, not a little bit upwards, not over it because of the gun depression a little bit, does a little bit suck sometimes because of the track blocking the turret on that. Those two tracks protect your commander's hatch. You see up there on the top? If you keep this tank flat on the ground, like flat, it is impossible to pen that easily by hitting... Only thing you can hit is that round circle when it's flat on the very top of that commander's hatch. 
And then that's fucking hard to hit with AP. So AP is going to be fucking hard to hit this tank if it's hold down. Unless you get on its side. Now, many people don't know this. When you angle this tank, because I've seen this happen a lot with uh, Rhino tanks. And they're complaining about the armaments on the side when they're angling. I'm going to tell you this right now for anyone who owns the Rhino. You do not angle the tank like this. You see how it's showing on screen? Let me show you in without the model. Like that. Do not angle like that. Why? Because since it has the, um, whoop, wrong thing. Because this is a body of a Konenstiger. So if you angle it just like that, it still can get hit by high pending guns on the side or through the tracks. That's why most Konenstigers know if they have to angle, it's like this. They only angle slightly. Because that's the only way you could do it. Because if you angle more than that, you're just going to get pen. And just don't do that. Now, you're probably wondering, since the other armaments, I want to say real quick, is how good is the skirt? Well, since you just saw this again, it doesn't protect you really well against high explosives, which makes no sense. It's welded away from the tank, and a tier 10 still pens through that to kill me? Like... What? And it wasn't AP. I know that British derp gun. It only has HE or heat. And you're telling me that spatial armaments doesn't protect me? What the fuck? Uh, so, I just wanted to say that. Like, it's weird how some of the armaments is built on this. But it's strong in the front. As long as you can cover that underbelly, it is strong. Now, everybody says the turret rank could be also bad too if you hit. Like, if you're face hugging it, I'll zoom in. That little right red right here is probably your best pen then if you have a good pending gun that could pen a lot but it's rounded so it's a lot more harder than you think so yeah and it's funny how in the back these little two circle things which i'll show you right now are considered armaments as well which is funny because it's just put on pieces and it's freaking more armor than the track armor which is freaking hilarious so that's it for the armaments because it's basically the same thing as you expect on some tanks, except for it didn't do anything special on the Konenstiger whole armor, except for welding cube pieces here and there. Now, does it mean like these flat armors are useless? No, I've seen it bounce sometimes, but yeah, the best armor is to not get hit. That's that rule of tanking that modern day tanks have. So, now let's talk about all its fucking problems. And I mean all its fucking problems. What do I mean by that? Well, let's first talk about the gun, which is basically, like I said, the 122mm BL-13. It's the same gun as basically the Defender. This thing hits hard. Like, the damage on here is 440, which you could do, like, I think the lowest roll I've seen is 300 and, uh, 330. An average roll I do is, like, 380, it, depending on armor. If it's light armor, it could do a little bit more. But so far, when I fire something in AP and hit something in multiplayer, it just does 375. So I don't know where they're getting 440 when, when I hit something. It doesn't do that much, so... I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, no, no, no. We're not selling it. Um, so, fire rate. This is one of the problems. Fire rate is 5.27. Now, you're thinking, yes, it's a Soviet gun. What do you expect, Fury? It's a Soviet gun. So, basically, it's going to have a long reload because it's a 122. And it's a Soviet inside of a British tank reloading system. The problem is, well, I want to say that for the personal things. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But it's way too long for a reload. Now, accuracy at 100 meters. Oh, boy. 0 0.35. Whew. Wait until we talk to the personal about that. And you'll see in-game when I try to shoot something sometimes. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not disking the tank's gun because a lot of people are used to the Soviet Union's gun. I just don't like the fact because everybody's playing fast-moving pacing. That's not the Soviet Union's play style because they are freaking heavy hitters. But you got to be careful hitting them because you can miss a lot. Sorry, I'll say that for the personal. Damage, 440. I've already told you that it doesn't do that much. I've never seen 400. If it does, then it just barely makes it. Now, penetration at 100 meters is 225. And penetration at 500 meters is 211. Okay, that's a little bit under par. Because you got to think, tier 8s. This is usually a tier 7 pen. Like the Tigers and stuff that pen up to 208 and stuff like that so 211 for long range distance you can clearly see that this is designed heavily to be close and personal sometimes but we'll go get that in a minute so ammo capacity only 40 which makes sense because of how long the reload is you're not going to be firing every single show unless your team really sucks and you're the last one alive being smart yeah that could be a problem so Talking about the gun is that. Now, obviously, turning rotation is not bad. It's the same thing like the British. It's not bad at turning and stuff like that. Now, however, clutch braking is really bad. Like, if you try to turn that whole rotation turret, you've got to turn that and the gun if you're trying to shoot a light tank on the move. No matter if it's something. Because, holy crap! Does the turning little bit fucking sucks on this. So you might want to have clutch braking as a perk or thing. But you're going to need more than that because we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, clutch braking is definitely a must. So, and then you got the tracks. And this thing is slow. This thing only goes 38. Now don't get me wrong. That's faster than a mouse. It's faster than the Churchill's. But it feels sluggish. Like I wish I could hand you the controller and give it to you and show you. It just feels sluggish to me. And I don't know why, but it just does. And then radio, since I modified it, since I have a screw uh, perk that has single range increase, is 1,142.11 meters, which is, that's not bad, but you'll see why when I did that. So, yeah. So in case you're wondering, let's talk about the other problem it has and oh my god it gets me killed so many times the viewing range on this tank sucks ass it sucks ass the seeing on this tank you're seeing right now the 497 that's me modifying it when i got this tank it was below almost to this concealment rate and that concealment rate is with one scale perk i didn't put camouflage netting because i kind of need the other stuff on there, oh, I'll get to that in a minute, but it, it, the viewing range really sucks. Concealment sucks. Um, so, let's go to the ammunition cost so we go right to the game, because we have a lot to talk about how bad this is. Um, but don't get me wrong, if you like this tank, and I'm not saying that everybody would hate it, I'm just saying that real quick. If you like this tank, that's fine, but... Uh, I'll explain my personal thing when we get to the game. Okay, so we talked about the ammunition. We talked about its damage here. So, pretty much, it's even... Here's the part I don't understand. So, I thought it would be the same and I move on. But if you look on the very right where it says 500 meters, which it says it's, four, it's 204. I mean, yeah, 204. Meanwhile, the gun that has the same ammunition loading is 211. So which is it, Wargaming? Is it 204 or 211? I don't know. God, Wargaming, stop throwing curveballs. So, so we talked about the damage, and the ammo speed is 1,000. So it's AP. What do you expect? Next one. Oh, Jesus, this is expensive as fuck. Um, same ammunition with more fucking, like, with a P in it. So I'm not going to say all that. So pretty much 100 meters. 265, okay, 500 meter, 250, that fixes what pen you need for sniping, great, because that's an average roll of an 8 at sniping range with this pen, however, it does the same damage, and it's APCR, so if anyone knows APCR, it's, it's a fast projectile, which is good, because you need it to be, because you're shooting a small round thing and shooting really fast at a target, however, they're unreliable sometimes when they angle, 
So that's another problem with the APCR. But but the cost is four thousand eight hundred a shell. It's bad enough the first one makes a lot of things, but thankfully. This tank makes a lot of money, even if you don't fire a lot of shots, because I've tested this many times, and in a multiplayer, it makes a lot of money for just pending a couple of shots, so it's got a high silver earning, so 4,800's a lot, just don't fire all 40, because that would get you bankrupt. I just keep only 10. Ugh. And then high explosive. I know I should pack some of this because it is a 122. It could heart some light armor RDs and stuff and one shot the son of a gun because it does 530 damage. But however, it only has 68 pen and splash radius is 2.49 and the speed is 700, which is less than the AP, less than that. It makes sense, but still, it's a pain in the ass to use. <sighs> All right. Since I got all that, got everything done, now I can let free and talk about the problems. Oh, okay, now I can finally let loose on this and see, show you why. In case you don't know already the problems, let me just try to explain these problems to you, to try to help you understand my frustration with this tank. Okay, first of all, this tank has three problems that you have to fix. And that's usually in tanks. When you get a tank or buy a tank, you wanted to keep it only with two problems. Why? Because Wargaming designs it to where you have to fix with skill perks, uh, your commander equipment, etc., etc., your consumables, to fix these said problems that you have with a tank. But not the fucking Rhino! Oh my god, the Rhino is so... Like, the gun itself. Why is it a Soviet gun? Seriously. Why can't it be like the German gun? I wouldn't mind having the whole armor replaced from the Tiger tank, you know, the Kunensteger Tiger tank, and replace it with a Defender. If you give me the German fucking 10.5 gun. I would not mind that. I would not mind it because... Holy crap, the Soviet Union is not designed to be engaging, like, unless you're engaging aggressively, you're not. And the problem is, you could do that with the Rhino, but if you do that, you die, you die, you die, because of that fucking reloading! The reloading! I can't stand it! Every time I die, it's to the fucking gun! That gun is too long to reload! And I get it, it does a lot of damage, but god damn it, like... It, the, the whole because okay because because of how long the reloading of the gun is you can't single-handedly go lone wolf with this tank you can't why because again the reloading and this tank is supported heavily heavily to be a support role vehicle with people protecting its ass it's got a major gun that can harm people but it's kind of useless if it doesn't do anything so you're probably thinking, okay, can't go aggressive, why not just hold back? Here's another problem. The aim time is so atrocious. This is me sacrificing the reloading equipment you're seeing in-game right now with the aim speed. And you see how fucking hard it is sometimes for that aim reticle. I can't even hit the light tank on the move easily. And it's so... Ugh. There are so many games where the ridicule betrayed me and how slow it is. Now I get it. If you're holding down in the back and you're not moving so much, you could probably get away with it doing that. But here's the problem. you got to rely on your team. So if you're not a team player tank, you're not going to like this tank. Why? Because like I said before, the viewing range sucks on this tank. Without equipment, without fucking skill perk, heavily towards do those things you won't be able to see very easily the enemy and it that sucks that really sucks so it, it's like either you move forward to see them or sit in the back and pray to god they don't have a viewing range better than you which 90 percent of the time is going to happen because you have no concealment because you could see up to 410 without that netting thing but do you see the problem why i said most tankers want two problems with a tank instead of one because here you are have to fix your concealment 
any of your own range to try to make it a decent like helper tank or you have to fix the reloading or you have to fix the fucking like speed and fucking turning thing it, it's a mess this tank is a mess now i get it hard case moves slow everything else moves slow but i don't have them to review them so i can't tell how they perform in battle but i'm telling you right now with the rhino like the rhino just suffers so much of that and it's just hard to say about it now most people that play this tank usually play it in ai because they don't want to deal with it because ai's always shoot the strongest part which is the upper plate so if they shoot your under plate or when you're angling and like i told you you're fucked and again it's just the pen is okay on it and i get it people like tanks like this because of its pen how much damage it does they could tolerate all the three problems but that's not me i have over a lot of tanks in this game that are tier eight and i prefer them over this when it comes to reliability and just having the aim time really down below average and reloading fucking long if you don't have the equipment piece and fucking turning and driving feels sluggish what are you supposed to do <laughs> like it, it, it's the biggest problem i have with the tank with that now do i have anything good to say about it well if you hit a target it really ruins their day like when i actually finally hit the light tanks you're seeing i actually can fucking harm them but it, it's just like i'm trying to compare this to the other tanks and yes i know what you're gonna say fury be nice it's only 8800 gold but to be honest with you i wish it was 6000 gold that's how much i feel playing this tank now don't get me wrong if you're a type of person that enjoys these types of sluggish aim time and tactical wise that's fine i have met so many soviet union players that play a hell the defender the other def derp guns anything with a 122 that you have a long time aiming okay i get it if you're that play style but for me to pay for something that has three major problems is a fucking not a good idea i mean you want always always to have two major problems to help you out not three <sighs> so what else can i say well even though you suffer through this a lot it does make money it's got a good money chance earning because even though i do shit it still pours in silver so i gotta say it does okay with money earnings but again like but there's so many other tanks that are cheap that could be making more money better it's more like can you tolerate a tank that has so many problems to it and say to yourself that you could enjoy it making money out of it i i just personally could not see that i want to give players if i was a tank person i want to give players the benefit of the doubt of a good tank for at least having two problems so that way they have to choose which one to fix that would be a good idea marketing for tanks not bring out a tank that has to cause everything in your wallet to fucking fix this tank and that's awful awful and i know there's many tanks that even has four problems or five problems trust me they're the worst of the worst leave down in the comments if you want to see like the top 15 tanks and premiums that i think is the most worst in the game um let me know if you want to see that but for anything like the rhino that i've been playing and you do fight tens with this so try to hit a tense weak spot where they could shoot you anywhere to kill you is not fun so it's it's a mess this tank is whole of a thing is a mess and i want it to be better i want it to be good wargaming if you're watching this video please update the tank at least give me one thing fixed speed viewing range or aim time i don't care if the long reload i could tolerate that because that's many tanks but just give me something to work with don't give me a piece of shit tank and i got this tank with the equipment thing that you recommend you guys wargaming you recommend putting on there and it doesn't do par good or even below averagely perform without struggling with it this is almost like the nemesis all over again except for with the nemesis it's the opposite so you got good pending gun but horrible armor on the nemesis here you got good armor 
but you just got a horrible aim time. So that, I don't know. Oh, and when you do have this tank, there's so many times I get killed, and it's just the aim. Uh, battle's almost over. I'll let you guys watch the rest. I'll see you guys when I get back to the garage. So, final view for the Rhino. As you can tell, I don't like this tank. I, I don't. Like, out of many tanks I have in the garage, out of many options that people could get that's even cheaper, is better. Now, does that mean 100% this tank is 100% bad? No. No. I mean, other people could enjoy it. Other people could do other things. But just the fact that you know like uh, these are before i get to the real i'm just telling you right now i'm giving you a warning if you buy it this is the things you're gonna have to face you're gonna have to face a long aim time you gotta face a long reloading you have to face not able to see without teammates helping you you're not gonna be able to pen tier 10s easily this thing does not protect you against tier 10s with the spatial armaments it has it's basically and it has slow speed slow uh rotating turret I mean, not rotator, rotating hull. So, you get my point. So, I'm just saying that right now. I'm just giving you an idea of what you're going to have to get into when you get this tank. Now, does the damage and everything make it up? Yeah. I mean, like, any Soviet player can know that they play, like, guns like this all the time. But again, that was the pass. A lot of times tanks today or fast-paced action fighting. It's not like the old days where I could hold down and play a sniper role and actually play, you know, take my time because tanks have, like, these beneficiary things like that. No. Today is mostly just fast-running, fast-pacing, fast this, fast that. And I get it. People want to do that because they don't want to spend an eternity in a match, and I don't blame them, but at the same time, I kind of miss the old days, because this would be an old days tank if it came out back then. If it came out back then, it would have been perfect. A hold-down tank that relies on team, which teams are reliable and all that, it would have been perfect back in the day. So, if you want to get this tank, make sure you play up with a squad. Do not, like, play this by yourself. Make sure you have a team that is trustworthy and able to see the target. And do not go front lines with it. It is too heavily thing. Unless you're holding down with the head turret. But even so, you could easily get flanked. Just stay mid-range or long-range, guys. I mean it. Because that way you have a better chance of blocking shells from distance than you do at close range. And remember, it's not an invincible tank. Especially when you know how to kill it. So, the final thing for 8,800 gold, because I would recommend you buy the cheapest, because I don't believe in Wargaming saying that you should buy the expensive, which is, oh, what is the expensive one again? Hmm, yeah, for this tank that I just ran to launch. Yeah, 13,300! Uh, no! Uh, people! No! Not on this! No, 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 no! You do not! Just don't! Stop it! No. No. You do not pay that much gold for a tank that has so much problems for 13300 I don't care if it gives you seven days of premium. You know what? You could probably get it out of a crate. If you have multiple tanks that you own, just get it out of a crate thing and get gold for that. Or fuck it, just don't. And I don't care about the boosters. The boosters are going to go by really quick. After 20 games, it will go down really quick. Trust me on that. These things are useless unless you have like 50 or 60. Trust me. It's not worth the money for the boosters. You could get a booster at a cheap thing or premium at a different thing. Just an equipment, you can make money just getting playing this tank, okay? I know it sucks without it. And trust me, I know because I tried it stock and holy crap, I needed everything. But paying that much money to Wargaming is a stupid idea stupid and even if you go cheaper with 11,300 because you still have to pay like good money no it's not worth that much even with the seven days of premium and just boosters and just the tank just get the tank 
Just get the tank. It's cheaper. It's only like, what? 45 bucks if you consider all the gold you have to pay. So it's like freaking cheaper than if you have to pay taxes with it. But I'm just saying, guys. So even if you do want the premium, just get the loaded or that. I know it's, I don't like that idea of, of Wargaming charging more for its stuff. But I'm just telling you, just don't get the Mega. You could get that equipment money in game, please. Like, you could do that. Sorry, I had to ramble on like that for the audience that do know not to buy the most expensive, but I just wanted to make sure and clear to not to do that. All right, so for 8,800 gold, I have to give this tank, <sighs> I'll give it a 5.5 out of 10. It's slightly a little bit above average. And here's why before anyone criticized me for me talking about it. Gun damage, good. It actually does it. Armaments can protect you against AP a lot if you hold down incorrectly. Good. But everything else is just armaments and timing. The gun, if you have no one that can harm you, you, you get a good game. If you're in your tier 8 game, you get a good game. But if anything above that, you're fucked. Because you got to aim for weak spots. And this tank is not heavily designed easily to aim at weak spots easily without waiting for an eternity. So, yeah, I'm just going to give it that. Because even though it's slightly above average and the pricing is okay for it, but I think it should be 6000 this tank is going to need a lot of maintenance work, a lot of updates, a lot of fixing, because this tank is just hard to play right now. And it makes sense why I don't see it much in multiplayer. But trust me, it is that hard to play. Like that game clip you just saw. That was me doing after 30 games of trying to play this tank. It is fucking hard to play this tank. Yeah. But if you have it and you like it and you disagree with me, that's fine. I mean, I'm just giving my own opinion. I'm only one human reviewing tanks. I'm not a professional tank and everything. I just give you the basic of me playing this game for almost 90 years now. Of playing World of Tanks console. And I've seen how people play. And trust me. I've seen things that people could do good with tanks that I thought were shit. And people that don't do good. Is because they don't play it what it's supposed to be played. So I'm trying to balance it out from everything. So yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope they update this in the future. I will probably make a video if it does update it. But so far no update. This is the tank we get. So just be careful buying it. Just make sure if you want it, just have some gold standby if you don't want anything else. But before you do that, I'm going to remind you again, if you're going to buy this tank, Halloween is going to come up soon. And there's going to be two new tanks, an alien tank and this. This tank doesn't end until November 6th. So keep that in mind. If you need gold to save and you're going to get gold later on, put this on hold because you don't need it that badly. Because Alien and The Mummy will be coming out shortly in whatever Wargaming releases them. So, yeah. I'm just giving you that update. So, thank you all so much for watching. And please, leave down in the comments if you want me to re still review The Ruthless. I mean, I know a lot of people said no. But I just want to see your guys on fa uh, YouTube to see if um, you want me to. Alright. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next battle. Take care.